Hello, my horror-loving dudes. I'm Killjoy Jake, and today we got an update on Ty West's Maxine, Evil Dead Rise, and Scream 7. Let's get into all of it. Well, sometimes that is better. Getting into our first update, talking about Maxine. I am super hyped for this movie, especially after X and Pearl last year, two of my favorite horror films from 2022. Absolute blasts from start to finish. I can't wait to see how this trilogy ends. Now, if you have no idea what I'm talking about, if you were living under a rock in 2022, let's get you caught up to speed here about X and Pearl. X that came out in March of last year is about a bunch of people that are boning each other at this barn in Texas. I'm not even kidding, that's really what it's about. The old people that live at this farm, though, don't take too kindly to strangers f***ing in the barn. It swiftly turns from Boogie Nights straight into Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and it's an absolute blast if you have not seen it. Highly recommend! And the craziest thing about this A24 slasher is that later that year, it got a prequel film and a sequel was just announced, which we're gonna talk about in a second, but Pearl takes place in 1918, following the old lady who lives at the barn in that movie, seeing her early life. Once again, it's a horror slasher kind of thing, more of like a character-driven thing opposed to your typical slasher format, like how we had an X, but it's a mass Masterpiece, Mia Goth's best performance to date, probably. Once again, if you have not seen either of those films, I highly recommend seeing them, but also I would skip this update because we've got to talk spoilers for X to talk about Maxine, which is the continuation. So where Pearl was a prequel to X, Maxine is going to be the first sequel technically. Mia Goth will of course be reprising her role of Maxine in this upcoming film, and she has some newcomers coming into this movie that has old Jake here pretty excited. Maxine's cast includes Elizabeth Debicki, Moses Sumney, Michelle Monaghan, Bobby Cannaville, Lily Collins, Halsey, Giancarlo Esposito, and Kevin Bacon. These casting announcements have me super excited for a few reasons. First of all, we already knew that Kevin Bacon was going to be attached to this, and he's a great actor, love him and everything, but Giancarlo Esposito's gonna be in this movie? What? I had the pleasure of meeting Giancarlo Esposito a few weeks ago at Horror Hound in Cincinnati, and that was a blast. They say not to meet your heroes, but Giancarlo Esposito is nothing like the characters he plays. He is super nice, super awesome, super laid back, just a really nice guy. And I'm pumped to see him in a horror movie, man. Like, I f***ing love The Boys. I love The Mandalorian. Breaking Bad might be the best thing that's ever graced television. <laughs> the plot description for Maxine currently reads, Maxine reverses the franchise's trajectory through time to pick up with Maxine after the violent events of X, as the sole survivor continues her journey towards fame, setting out to make it as an actress in 1980s Los Angeles. She has the X Factor after all, she's gotta make it in Hollywood. Production has just kicked off this month, so we'll likely see a release date for the film later next year, or maybe even late this year, depending on how long it takes to make. If I had to guess, Maxine's probably coming out like early next year, maybe like as a summer film. I think that makes the most sense. It, it's a movie about Hollywood. I feel like it's a good time to drop it is probably June or July, maybe even 4th of July weekend. Mia Goth has praised the script, telling Variety it's the best script of the three by far. It's going to be the best movie of the trilogy. Goth continues saying, it's the biggest story of the three with the highest stakes and Maxine has gone through so much at this point. So when we find her in this new world, she's just a force to be reckoned with and she goes through some pretty wild adventures. The thing that has me the most perplexed about Maxine is what is going to happen happen in this movie since our killers got, well, murdered in the last film. I told you there was going to be spoilers in this. I warned you. Now, as we learned from Pearl, Mia Goth plays a pretty excellent killer. And I don't know if you guys saw Infinity Pool from earlier this year, but it might just be my favorite horror film of the entire year. I don't know if anything's going to top it. It was a 10 out of 10. Mia Goth is amazing. My running theory with Maxine right now is that I don't think that she will actually turn into the villain, although once again, very likely scenario, but I see her being the protagonist this time around. There's a duality in both of her characters in this universe between Pearl and Maxine. I think Maxine's going to be kind of like the good guy, where Pearl, not so much, obviously. But if you remember from the end of X, it was revealed that the televangelist that we had been watching this entire time is actually Maxine's father? What, what? A twist, you say? So my guess is that they're going to be the antagonists of Maxine, being the ones that maybe want to pull her out of Hollywood and back into their crazy family. And Maxine is not going to be all about that. She's got to be a star. Regardless of what they do for Maxine, I'm just super excited for it. It's going to be 1985 Los Angeles. There's probably going to be so much cocaine in that movie. And also some wild misadventures that will probably feel a little infinity pool. 
E. Your boy's not complaining about that whatsoever, though. That movie kicked ass. I can't stop talking about it. Mia Goth is so good. We should just put her in every horror movie. I wouldn't be complaining. Do I sound like a simp yet? I, I think I sound like a simp. Let's move on. Getting into update number two. Talking about Evil Dead Rise. Now, I was kind of tiptoeing around this little subject because I didn't want it to get spoiled for y'all, but the director told SFX Magazine all of the beans. He spilled all them damn beans. So I guess it's okay for me to talk about. So we're going to talk about it. Check out my spoiler-free review for Evil Dead Rise right up here, by the way. You might recall in Sam Raimi's Army of Darkness that they introduced the idea that there are at least three Necronomicons, or the Book of the Dead, out there in the world. Remember the one that almost bites off Ash's fingers? Remember that. Director Lee Cronin recently told SFX Magazine there's directly connectivity between what happens in this story and the others. They're in the same world. This is not a parallel universe in any way. It's happening after Fede's movie and after Sam's, but in a world where those stories have taken place. The book that's in this story is connected back to the past. If we look at Army of Darkness and at the fact that there's three books, Sam used one, Fede used one, and I said, you know what? Give me the third one and let me go tell an Evil Dead story in that context. Going along with this Book of the Dead quote, we also have ourselves a little bit of a clip from Evil Dead Rise where one of the characters accidentally stumbles upon this new Necronomicon. Or should I say the third one? like how I was just talking about. Now here's what I'll say about this. I've read a few non-spoiler reviews where people are kind of trashing on like how they mess with the lore a little bit, but I, I don't think it's really, they don't really mess with it all that much. They kind of just, yeah, they have the third Book of the Dead. It's a little different looking, but like, yeah, they're all, they look different in every single movie, man. Remember like 45 seconds ago when I was like, hey, remember that book that almost bites off Ash's fingers? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Might want to remember that, that's all I'm saying. Another thing I want to say about this too is this spoils absolutely nothing about the film. It's just a cool little detail that ties it back to the past. And for those of you who are upset that Bruce Campbell is not in this movie, technically you're wrong. He's there, you just gotta listen for it. You should probably remember that too. Getting into our third and final update. One of the writers of the last two Scream films, Guy Busick, has made some pretty interesting and, well, maybe even dour comments regarding the future of Scream. I say dour only because this makes me sad. I'm sure it's going to be music to some of y'all's ears, though. Jamie, play that podcast clip. What about you and James? Like, how do you see your contribution to the franchise ending? Would, do you see it like ending as a trilogy, ending as it is now, or would you like to just keep writing Scream movies for as long as they ask? Well, I'm a huge fan. I think at some point, um, you know, I, I got to really be careful here about what I say. I don't want to get, uh, again, get in trouble. But I, I think I think the franchise benefits from new blood. I'll say that. Um, I think that it's always really exciting um, to me when I read something about a franchise that I love and there's a new creative force that's coming in that is going to bring a different flavor. So I feel like, you know, I, as a fan, I'd love to see the franchise continue forever. I'd love to see 20 of these things, you know, over the next decades. Um, but yeah, that's, that's really all I can say, but I, you know, I hope, I hope things continue. <sighs> Man. That's a little scary for us Scream 5 and 6 fans. It seems like if Spyglass and Paramount decide to do a new movie, it might be out of the hands of Mr. Guy Busick here and our entire creative team in general. Now, obviously nothing's confirmed yet, but basically everything we've heard from the directors and now one of the writers is that, you know, I hope someone else comes in here. You know, fresh blood really benefits the franchise. And listen, I'm not going to be that guy who gets on here and says, oh my God, make another Scream movie. I want these guys to do what they want. You can't force creativity. You really can't. And I wouldn't want them to make another movie just to make another movie because that's not what I want to see. I want Scream 7 to be good. So if they're kind of done with it, they want to move on to other projects, I respect that. I really do. But I will say I'm worried for the future of the franchise because they're definitely going to make a Scream 7 real soon here. And a massive swap in creative forces might alter the product a little too much. I talked about this in my last Scream 7 update, but I've seen so many requel trilogies just go to dog sh because the creatives changed in the middle of a trilogy. Why the that would be the case, I don't know, especially when you're setting up this big story across a couple of movies. Now, while I am worried that maybe someone else new could come on board and maybe ruin the story in the last act here, I will say there is a certain director out here who has been tasked with something similar before and did a really good job. He's also the director that would be literally my next choice to do a Scream movie, and I'm kind of not against him finishing up this story. 
The first time I heard of director Christopher Landon, it's when I was reading about some of the Paranormal Activity sequels, which he wrote. Christopher Landon has a writing credit on most of the Paranormal Activity sequels, even the most latest feature in the franchise, Next of Kin. I think that movie was actually kind of underrated. It doesn't feel like a Paranormal Activity movie at all, it just feels like a straight up found footage film, but it's a really good time. He also directed my favorite Paranormal Activity sequel, The Marked Ones, which once again, he wrote. Now, although that checks off one little box on the things I'm worried about, the guy can go on to an already established franchise and kind of pick up the pieces, do something fun with it. I think we, we've already established that with the Paranormal Activity movies, whether you like them or hate them. I mean, they made seven of them. But the other thing I'm concerned about is you can't just throw any horror movie director at the Scream franchise. I mean, some people aren't going to get it. Some people are either going to make it way too dark or way too campy. I think Christopher Landon could do something that's a little in between, especially after writing and directing the two Happy Death Day films and Freaky. Personally, I love all of those movies, and they are so Scream inspired, like so much. So tell me that wouldn't be awesome to have Christopher Landon directing one of these movies. Maybe get Michael Kennedy, the freaky writer, also on board to write part of the screenplay with Christopher. I think that'd be pretty cool. So no matter how you feel about this, I'm telling you that a massive shift in creative forces just last minute like that, trying to pick up the pieces, it's not going to be good unless you take some time in the creative room and just let it simmer. Let it simmer for a second. Just try to get something down. Try to get something down that's good that people actually want to see. Not just a continuation to this story that any old Joe Schmo can make. Basically what I'm saying is that if Radio Silence can't do it, if Guy Busick and James Vanderbilt, they're chilling out there somewhere, get Christopher Landon and Michael Kennedy on this bad boy. What do you guys think about these updates though? Are you excited for Maxine, Evil Dead Rise? Scream 7? Because I certainly am, worries and all. Leave me something about all these updates in the comments below. Thank you all so much for watching this brand new horror update video. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe for more horror content in the future. Please consider supporting me on Patreon by clicking that link in the description below. Thank you all for watching again, and as always, don't forget to kill it out there, y'all.